Hello everyone, it's Mike Levin on another Code with Mike Friday, third video today, and it's going to be an upgrade to Linux, moving it from Tiny Core Linux 5.4 to 6.1, and you'll get a little insight to how these embedded Linuxes work as opposed to their counterparts, the desktop Linuxes that we're more familiar with, such as Ubuntu or uh, Red Hat or whatever. So uh, I'm going to do a download here. Let's see, find our download links. And uh, let's see, they always give a few different files. Uh, they, they give, oh, there they are Core, Tiny Core, and Core Plus. We just want Core. That's the base system with a command line interface, no graphics, only nine megabytes. Can you imagine a nine megabytes Linux distribution? It's true, and it provides everything you need to do hosting. Uh, to put that in perspective, uh, hmm, how do you put that in perspective? Nine megabytes compared to the you know, 16 gigabytes that we carry around on our uh, keychains every day. It's just tiny. You saw how fast it downloaded. That should put it in perspective. Show in Finder. I will drag it out here. We'll need that in a moment. Uh, but also what I'm going to do is I am going to just uh, close out of uh, all this terminal stuff from the last video. Uh, I'm going to just forcibly close this. And I'm just going to, this is my uh, Pipulate Levinix server. I'm just going to like force out of it turn off. There's nothing special about a pipulate slash Linux server because your code is kept on GitHub and your data is kept on Google Spreadsheets so you can just go destroying or resetting servers left and right and it makes no difference. But the reason I'm doing that is because I am going to clone it instead of just downloading it. So this file here I got from just a direct download link to, from to the repository at GitHub. It doesn't give you the actual repository. It just gives you a, a zip of the current status. And you can always tell those by the hyphen master in the file name, which means you, you downloaded the zip file of the master branch of the repository. Yeah. And highlight, delete. And we make sure we're on our desktop, cd tilde slash desktop, and we get Clone. And uh, I tend to use the HTTPS just because it's easier to remember, but I'm going to force myself to use the SSH protocol so I don't have to do some more work later to get rid of password uh, typing. So that's git, let's see, git at github.com colon username slash projects and it usually it's project dot git but I've seen it work without let's see what we get yeah it works without that's fine now we can cd into pipulate oh I got pipulate I'm actually interested in Linux cd dot dot same thing as before but the project instead of pipulate is Linux it'll take a little bit longer to download because it's got all those QEMU binaries in there, but not too long. It's about halfway. Now, Linux isn't really this big. It's just the history of Linux is that big because I've been swapping in and out different binaries over time to optimize it. Okay, so CD Linux LS. And uh, now I'm going to cd into pipulate.app. No, no, no. cd into reset slash uh, server ingredients. And here we are. And I'll do the same change as you saw on the last video. But now I'm doing it in, a, in the actual repository. So I go uh, vi. Be sure I have VI on my local Mac. Uh, I'll use Vim, it's a little easier. And this file is pipulate.sh. And now I search for Python space pipulate. 
and I change that to web pipulate, quit, git commits, and <laughs> fix bug from file name change git push bam that's the first step now it's fixed for everyone out there who's downloading it it's like 20 downloads per day of Levinix slash pipulate and all these people have had have been having bad experiences with a startup script not actually starting pipulate after a pipulate build but this is why we're in alpha we're working out all these tiny details that's permanently fixed for anyone downloading that now off of my site all the links point to uh, github so it's fixed everywhere uh, next step if you wanted to see that by the way this is really rudimentary stuff but we could totally go into github.com visit my repositories go into Levinix and fix a bug from file name change so you can see it's, it's there. And uh, I don't feel compelled to test it because I just tested it a second ago on the non-repository version, but we will inevitably be testing it. Um, <clears throat> next step, we have downloaded the, the current for ISO. Now watch this. This is just mind-blowing how easy it is to do these upgrades and stuff under um, an embedded Linux type model. So first of all I'm going to clear so it's easy to look at and I'm going to type git status. It should be a clean uh, working uh, directory. Now I'm going to open that ISO. On Macs you can just double click and surf into an ISO. I believe on Windows you need a little extra software to do this, but you're going to find some files in there that constitute uh, Tiny Core Linux. This core.gz is the operating system, 6.6 .6 megs, and vmlinuz is the kernel. So uh, here's our Linux. I'll drag it up here. I click. Now here's the tricky part. On Macs, uh, this icon here not only runs the application, but it is also a package. Double clicking a folder icon or a directory icon can run the application on a Mac. It's a very elegant innovation. So I show package contents to actually surf into it instead of running it. And then I find the directory where I know all these files are located. Now, Here's the process of upgrading from uh, an old version of Tiny Core Linux to new, both the files and the kernel. You ready? Don't blink. Replace, replace, upgraded. That easy, no way. Well, Close out of this stuff, open my Levinix folder, show the pretty icons, double click, and let's have a good video, let's have a good video. You'll see it printed at the top as soon as it gets past this uh, decompressing step. Ready? It used to say, I think, 5.4. If we see 6.1, this is successful. Right about where my pointer is. There, 6.1. Now, let's see if it goes all the way uh, through a, a, a full boot. Now remember, stuff is installed on this already, uh, the whole, you know, uh, Pipulate application. Yet I just did an operating system upgrade, just kind of swapping some files out underneath. So what happens here is in embedded Linux, you've got this incorruptible core. Those were the files I just copied over. And then you've got a directory that holds extensions. They're sort of like plugins, things that don't require alterations to core. They're sitting right by its side. And then there's alterations that you need to core, things that go in, you know, user local bin or whatever. And that gets superimposed on top of core through a quick hard drive restore, which you probably barely even saw take place there. 
oh, it's, this is a fresh install. So this is the original server build that's taking place. So after this is done, there, that's the, uh, that's the restore that we saw right there at the end. After that's done, we should have the Linux documentation web server back on port 8080, and we do, but we should not have the pipulate thing on 8888 because it's a fresh Linux poll. And you can see build pipulate is option number one, which I'll start to do, and then I'll pause the video because it's kind of like a 10 minute build or so. Enter one to exit or two to install pipulate. It gives you a chance to get out because it is such a long process. And then I start to market the fact what's really going on here is we're installing Python and Git. And, uh, okay, starts doing its thing. It's, it highlights in white uh, each major package. And then all that other stuff is kind of like its dependencies and stuff being installed. This is a very lightweight version of what you would think of as Debian Linux. Debian's big innovation was that it had a software repository that resolved all the dependencies, which was the big pain point of Linux back in the day, uh, early, mid-90s. Uh, it was very difficult to install software on your system because you had to resolve all the dependencies as you compiled the software with the GCC, you know, GNU compiler. Uh, they call it compiling from source. And to do that, you had to track back through all these dependencies. So modern repositories, even in a version that's, you know, a tiny six megabyte version of Linux, uh, has systems to sort of work out those dependencies during the install. So it just finished Python, it's now moving on to Git, and it's installing curl and libssh2 and a bunch of other things. So I'll finally pause, but I wanted to point out, how, you know, how awesome what really is going on through this build is. And I could have pre-built, but I like everyone seeing what a, uh, a server build looks like. Okay, we're back. It uh, went through the whole pipulate server build process and option one changed from install pipulate to get pipulating and it tells you you may now visit localhost 8888 which we already have running so I just do a refresh and there you have it. Now this uh, is already the uh, localhost 8888 bookmarklet from the last time, but we can just click it to ensure that uh, everything is as it's supposed to be. So there you have it. Uh, we are now on Tiny Core. Uh, what was that? 6.1 upgraded from 5.4, I believe. If I have those numbers correct, and uh, it was just dragging over a couple of files. Um, using the 9 megabyte version called Core and uh, you know getting it out of the ISO file dropping it into lo location and now uh, Pipulate is working again I fixed that file naming uh, error that I had introduced when I uh, broke up the files for scheduling versus web serving behavior and I have upgraded it to latest tiny, tiny core Linux so uh, oh last thing how can I forget this I'm just going to forcibly exit out of this. Again, remember, the servers aren't special. Uh, but if we uh, want to preserve that upgrade work, we need to push it up to the repository. But I built the server. Okay, let's see where we are. Uh, CD Linux. Git status. This is going to be ugly, right? Git status. Lots of stuff have been changed. All the hard drive files. Home opt TCE only core and VMLINUZ are the ones that I really want. How do we fix that? Well, of course, we just go into the reset directory, reset from a Mac, do status again, bam, it's reset to an initial state except for those two files. So we git commit upgraded to tiny or Linux 6.1 git push github me repositories Linux 
upgraded to Tiny Core Linux 6.1 and tested. Thanks for joining me. Hope to talk to you soon, and don't forget to subscribe.